All right, this is going to be a short video talking about uh, how to create environmental planes for the dock scene. We're going to use two new methods. One is the soft select method, which we briefly covered in class the other day. Uh, the other one is going to be your sculpting tool. All right, so we're going to start today and we're going to assume that we're building a ground plane. So we want some hills and a little valley. And since this is a dock, you want a place where the water is going to be. So low points and high points, essentially. Nothing more than that. So we're going to start with a primitive plane right up here in your dock. I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to scale him up. Let's use our width and height tools over here in our attribute editor so that we have an accurate understanding of how large we're making this. I'm going to say maybe 20 by 20. That'll work. All right. Now, <clears throat> we're going to want to crank up our subdivisions here. Uh, when we start this project, we're going to need a whole lot of subdivisions in order to make sure that our plane has a smooth look to it. Otherwise, as we try to make hills and valleys and an area where the water is going to come in on the shore, it's going to look really blocky. And while that might be good for certain styles, for the use of the tools, it's going to be easier to see with a high resolution or high level of subdivisions. So I'm going to crank this up to, let's say, 50 by 50. There we go. Alright, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the soft select tool. Alright, now over here on my right hand side you see tool settings. Tool settings has gotten to over here. This one looks like a, a little hammer with the dots next to it. So you're going to click, click on that. It's going to open up this menu on your left hand side of the screen. Down here you see soft selection. It brings up this little color grid as well as your fall off curve, fall off radius, all this information right here. Currently, soft select is turned off. All right. And by default, it should be turned off. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you two different ways to make some rolling hills and so forth using this method. I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to vertex mode. Now, Normally, if I click on vertex, I get one vertex. If I try to transform him, I can only transform one at a time or the group that I have all at once. But there's no fall off, right? I get this hard edge. And while maybe you're looking for that, if you're trying to make rolling hills, that would take forever. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to my soft selection. I'm going to turn it on. So I'm going to click Enable Soft Select. Now, when I hover over top my vertices, you see that I've got this gradient, this yellow to red to black gradient. The black means there is no um, influence, and the, the yellow means it's full influence. So if I click on this one vertice right here in the center. If I select that one and I translate up, you can see now that I'm getting a gradient of influence. It slowly comes out like so. More influence here, less influence, and zero influence down at the bottom. All right. This is what the soft select does. Now, you can also change the style of curve. So change the way it's influenced based on the profile of its curve. So currently we have the default curve. We can also change it to a more pronounced curve. These are just defaults. You can make your own presets like so. Notice it's a little more bulbous at top. We can change it to flat influence like so. I'm going to grab this guy so you can see. So it pulls it straight to a point. We're going to bring it to 
no curve. So you get a plateau. Let me undo these so I have some more room. You can also get a ripple effect. So if I start here, if you're looking to make water ripples, fantastic way to get some soft water ripples. Maybe you're looking to make some steps. You grab this and there we go. Something like a Mayan temple or something like that, only it's round instead of square. So you can come in here just like the gradient editor inside of Photoshop. There's some more nice water ripples there. So just like the editor inside of Photoshop, you can add and take away by clicking and removing or clicking in here and adding another point. All right. Like so. Now, we also have our fall off radius. Currently, let me back through some of these so I got a fresh start. Currently, you can see the size of my radius here. If I move this up and down, 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 you can see my sphere is getting larger and smaller based on this number over here, it's fall off radius. You can work on modes, object, global, surface, or volume. I would suggest for right now just leaving it, leaving it on volume. Um, some of these modes are a little bit more uh, specific to particular style of work, and you're not going to need those modes at this current time. So. That's one way to start making your hills in soft select. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select my standard mode. I'm going to do some pull-ups and select a few little areas like so. And notice I'm only pulling up in the Y. That's because I don't want this to expand in any direction currently. I only want this to give me a nice, soft, set of hills for my water to be on and maybe grab these and I push them down just a little bit I'm going to use the grid as my water line currently we would put an actual water layer in here at a later date. But that essentially would just be a single plane or cube that we would then texture to look like water. All right. So that's one really easy way to make the <clears throat> ground plane using soft select. The next version, I'm going to make another plane and pull him out here. Crank up his size 20 by 20 and 50 by 50 subdivisions. All right. I'm going to come over here to sculpting top and click that and I'm going to click my sculpting tool right here far left so I've selected the sculpting tool and you notice I've got this really big circle on my screen that is the current size of my brush which you can see right here it says 25 now there are two ways you can bring this down one is come over here and just simply scale it down to where it's a little bit more reasonable. Let's try five. There we go. The other way is to hold down your B button. B is in boy. And you would hold the button and left click and drag 
This will move the size of your brush up and down. You can see it changing interactively up here inside the tool settings. Now, once I decide on a good brush size, I can simply come in here and start to paint on my object. Again, if I come over here to fall off, you can see that I have different preset curves. All right. These can all be changed and edited at your will to fit your needs. All right, just like before. So if I want less fall off, I can come in here and get something like this. It'll give me a slightly softer brush so I can do a little bit more detail work. You can also come up here and adjust the strength. Move that down. Shrink the size of your brush a little bit. Maybe down like this and do some interesting stuff along through here. Maybe put in some little rocky features. Now right now, these are really pretty rough looking, but we can smooth that out. So we can come over here, the button right next to it is smooth. So we click on this, I'm going to move the size of my brush up a little bit, and I'm going to click over top, and it's going to move things back down towards their smoother state, flatter original state. All right, unmanipulated. Now, one issue you're starting to see here from the top view is I'm getting warping inwards like this. So I'm losing the squareness of my environment. Cool. So while you're in your sculpt tool, in order to avoid this warping right here, we need to come over to direction right here in our brush settings. Click on this, and because we know we're going up in the Y, come down here and just click Y. And now, when I brush, I can brush this edge as much as I want and stays perfectly flat. If I were to stay in center normal, which is the default, when I brush this edge, I get warping in all directions, which is definitely not what I want. All right? It's easy to smooth these things out of alignment with the world. Now, depending on what you're creating, this might be something that you're looking for. But in the case of what we're using this for currently, which is making an environment, we don't want it to warp so severely out of the square. All right? So when you're making yours, make sure that you set in your sculpting tool where it says direction to the direction you're actually trying to sculpt, which in this case is up, so it's in the Y.